Hello you, welcome to Geekism, and welcome back to Nuna, Can, Nuna Kanata, I can't even say the name of my own park, jeez, uh, Nuna Kanata, which is a Tega North American style zoo here in Planet Zoo. Uh, thank you so much to all the awesome feedback from episode one, I'm really glad uh, you all enjoyed it, I'm really glad that you're sort of interested in this slightly different theme um, uh, compared to a lot of what other people are doing out there, and I think it's really awesome to, uh, to, to tackle uh, something a little bit more uh, nuanced to maybe I guess I don't know um, but really enjoying it uh, really happy to come back in here we're starting off with something really quite random actually this is um, I'm afraid I didn't record the footage for the first bit but basically I want to, to do a, a really sort of large grand lodge um, that sort of sits as almost a weenie of the area a, a weenie is um, is a term coined by Walt Disney that sort of references uh, areas of theme parks that draw people's attention to them. So famously, uh, the Disney Castle um, is a weenie, but also things like the Epcot Ball, um, the, uh, the, the, the the Tree of Life at Animal Kingdom. Uh, these sort of large monuments that you can use as navigational points when moving through parks. Zoos very often don't have them, uh, but I did want this sort of rather grandiose uh, building as we entered the, uh, the entrance um, that we could sort of have as our main hub uh, restaurants, uh, you know, place to to meet at uh, the front of parks and that sort of thing. Um, so I thought the best way to do that would be something like a grand lodge, uh, very uh, uh, often sort of large, ostentatious builds out of wood and stone and other material. Um, Things like uh, the uh, the great. Oh, have you finished? Thank you, kiddo. Do you know what that last bit of cheese? No. Okay. You see, watch some Paw Patrol. Sorry, I met, completely messed up the audio of this yesterday. <laughs> Um, so uh, it was either re-record re this while uh, while I have my son, I'm, I'm a, I'm a stay-at-home dad um, for the most part. So it was either stay or so, so re-record this while I tried to occupy him with Paw Patrol. <laughs> um, <laughs> or not have a video great today, so it doesn't sound like it's working. Never mind, we'll carry on. Um, so yeah, something like a great, uh, great. Uh, there's a there's a hotel slash water park thing down near Niagara, here in Canada called it's called Great Wolf Lodge, I believe. I'm gonna have to Google it now in case it's called Timber Wolf Lodge. I'm get, I get mixed up. Uh, yes, Great Wolf Lodge Resorts. There may be a few of them around, but the one that's there. Uh, uh, nearest to me. I think it's an American company actually, they're all over the place, but the one nearest to us here is uh, near Niagara Falls um, and it's this beautiful uh, large uh, wooden lodge um, that has, and then behind it there's uh, there's like an indoor uh, water park, looks fantastic, um, so a little bit of uh, reference has been taken from there and then also some of the uh, large buildings that I found on Pinterest that are in the, uh, the Pinterest board for this park, which you'll find the link to in the description um, so we started building this actually on a live stream, I live stream every Monday uh, afternoon uh, Eastern Time, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, which is uh, 6 p.m. Uh, UK, and uh, obviously you can work out the rest from there. Uh, we stream for a few hours, and we never get much done in the live streams, to be honest. I always get a few comments afterwards saying, oh, you didn't build anything. I'm like, well, yeah, I didn't, you're right. But there's lots of lots of speed builds for building stuff. Uh, the live streams are a bit more of a way of sort of interacting with the community and really sort of uh, having fun with them. Um, but, uh, yeah, we... Uh, we do get some stuff done, and what we did was sort of like the outline of that building. And then uh, we go on later on, you'll see the detailing of it. You can see it's just like a, a wooden box there. But uh, here we've got... Um the start of a pretty large terrain project. Uh, I really wanted a sort of ice-fed uh, river canyon running through the park. And uh, and that's what you're looking at here. The uh, This is a bit, bit of a sort of... Uh, big change for me really. I don't normally tackle this sort of stuff and a lot of my sort of parks in Planet Coaster and most of the stuff I did in the beta of Planet Zoo, um, it's very flat. I, I make flat parks and that's because the terrain uh, tools scare me. <laughs> uh, but I really wanted to tackle one of these huge sort of canyon rivers uh, that that's, you get across North America. Um, and taking a lot of references from something like Niagara Falls, but not necessarily the falls themselves. Um, but you know, later on down, uh, you had the whirlpool uh, down the river and things like that. Um, I really wanted to sort of try and replicate those as best I can. Uh, I don't think this has turned out awfully, to be honest with you. I think this has turned out pretty good. What's up, kiddo? Go on then. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think this has turned out pretty well for me, but it still could be a lot better. Luckily. Luckily, there is somebody out there who is rescuing uh, these garden projects. There, somebody is rescuing terrain and, and foliage issues. 
Um, so I'm thinking maybe we may have to call in an expert to really finish this off. But I wanted to keep the footage in still uh, to let you all uh, to sort of show you my sort of thought process with it. Um, this is going to be the edge of the park as far as um, sort of stuff is concerned. So that here is, like I said, it's going to be quite a small park, um, but this is going to be the edge of the park in this area. So we'll sort of tail this off down into into just sort of uh, terrain work. But yeah, I had a lot of time with the terrain tool here. It's fine. I think one of the big problems is, is that the, the terrain... I mean, one of the big problems is I'm just not good enough at this kind of thing. But the other problem is, uh, is that the terrain textures are quite repetitive, to be honest with you. They're not really built for these huge kind of swathes of, of, uh, of terrain, I don't think. You know, they're for doing small parts of habitats and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the way to really fix that is to use rock work to, to break it up. So I, I do try and I'm kind of happy with the result, which is why I left it in. But uh, but yeah, this is basically going to get ripped out on somebody who's who's much more, uh, you know, this sort of thing is much more in their wheelhouse is going to come in and uh, and check it out for us. Um, but I am quite happy with the, with the bit I have done. And obviously it makes a nice, uh, nice backdrop to the um, to the to the building that we've got coming up now. So the wooden frame was uh, was done in um, in a in a live stream. Like I say, I, the main uh, the the plan for the live stream is never really to to do any major builds like this. So um, the wooden frame was put there just to kind of give us an idea of the shape of the building, so that we could work off the back of it. The idea here is that the front of the building is really sort of front facing in the park. It's got a really um, uh, sort of great uh, view as you walk into the area but then inside the building is a restaurant and then the back of the building actually opens up to a, a patio that will be very rarely used because uh, the you know the weather here isn't going to be fantastic for a good chunk of the year but you know what even even relatively northern areas of Canada have beautiful summers um, so there is going to be times of the year when people are going to be able to sit out and that terrace and uh, a path that surrounds it is actually going to be a uh, viewing area for a grizzly bear exhibit uh, that takes us down onto the river i want to do some really um really sort of oversized large natural habitats here for animals almost like you're in um, it's more of a sort of conservation park than a zoo so to speak you know so um we're going to try our best to make it so you can't even see any sort of habitat um enclosure space at all really um, that kind of depends on what uh, what that cliff ends up looking like, but that's kind of the plan here. I uh, really struggled with this. I wanted to do a, a large arch window, um, and um, the, the, these are one of the sort of key points of these large, large buildings. They often have a really beautiful feature window uh, at the front, and, and the, the reference images I was using had this really sort of large archway. Um, making the window itself wasn't so difficult. The difficult part was filling in the wall around it. Obviously, uh, the sort of wall pieces we have in the game, they're, they're sort of set to a similar sort of system. And we have the one meter, the two meter, the four meter high walls, and then we have the one meter, two meter, four meter high slopes. Um, and then there's one other piece that can actually be quite useful sometimes it's actually built to go around the stations of the transport rides it's like a, an L shape there's an L shape and then the opposite I guess like an like a lowercase r I suppose basically they're built to sort of fit around the uh, the gap that um, cars go into or boats or whatever it is you know in the in the stations of these uh, of these rides so um that can be quite useful you'll see me using there you go i've even used the one of them there to kind of fill in that gap but you're always going to end up with these tiny little uh, slithers where you can't um uh, where you can't sort of fill in the gaps there and that's just because we're trying to do something as, as silly as a big custom archway window it says it really well the thing the problem is is like i said in the last episode i'm not planning on doing interiors here so i build this beautiful window and then there's nothing to actually to see through it so i end up sort of uh, making a, a sort of fake uh, little scene i suppose so that you can see some stuff so you still get the depth of the uh, of the window there but uh, there's no sort of major interior going on um, a bit of feedback from the last episode then, a few uh, things that were mentioned. First of all, Nunu Kanata does sound like a Huna Matata. Yes, <laughs> it was in unintentional. They, they're just um, Inukatut words that sounded good. Um, but yeah, uh, to be honest with you, all week, I've, whenever I've said Nunu Kanata, I've thought to myself, what a wonderful phrase. Um, that's just kind of how it is, I suppose. Um, uh, the other thing is I mentioned that... Um, 
Uh, none of it was a Canadian province. It isn't actually, it's a territory. Uh, so apologies there for the slight um, incorrect terminology. Um, there are three Northern Territories in Canada. Uh, those being, uh, oh God, I'm testing myself here. A Yukon, none of it, and I can't remember the one in the middle. Ah, uh, I've, been, I've been researching, I've been learning this since I moved here. The one in the middle is, uh, is oh, I can't find an easy picture to look. I'm sure Canadians are screaming at me. The middle one is the Northwest Territories. Okay, so there is the Yukon, which is, well, so it's just Yukon now. It used to be called the Yukon. Uh, so there's Yukon, which is the Far East. And then there's the Northwest Territories. Uh, and then none of it, uh, which is the uh, the larger one encompassing a lot of the sort of uh, ice um, ice sheets and things like that. Uh, so yeah, apologies, it's not a province, it's a territory. Uh, the basic difference there is that the, the provinces such as Ontario, where I live here, British Columbia, Quebec, etc., uh, they have um, uh, provincial governments. So there's a there's a government of Canada, of course, uh, but then each of the uh, the uh, the provinces have their own government that sort of handles. Uh, uh, more sort of local issues um, similar in the UK I suppose to having sort of like a local council although they, they have a lot more power uh, the local council the, the, the provincial governments here excuse me have a lot more power than something like a like an Ameri- like an English um, English council or even an American state I believe actually they, they have quite a bit of um, provincial power um, the territories uh, don't have their own government they're, they're sort of uh, ran and dictated from the um, from the the, uh, the the country's government, the um, the um, what's the word? Not there's provincial government and there's f- federal government. There we go. All these new words that I'm learning we don't have in the UK. It works a little bit differently. Uh, although Canada does have a, a prime minister as opposed to a president, so and, and a and a similar kind of setup for par- for a parliament. So a lot of that uh, sort of has carried over. Anyway, I digress. So yes, apologies. None of us is a territory, not a province. Uh, anything else? What was the major things? Oh, a few people were suggesting animals. Um, a lot of people were asking for pronghorn slash uh, bison uh, exhibit or some sort of savanna, uh, you know, Great Plains. Uh, that is 100% the idea. The main four animals that are going into this park are timber wolves, grizzly bears, uh, pronghorns, and bison. Um, so yes, we're going to have a grizzly bear here as you sort of come in. The timber wolf is going to be separate. There's going to be a sort of conservation area for them. And uh, and then obviously we're going to have a sort of large plains that, that looks after bison and pronghorn. And then maybe a few other animals. Like I say, I'm interested in doing a, a sort of Central American uh, interior build. Um, I think, I'm not sure whether it quite fits the theme here, but I, I would really just like to vary the animals up a little bit. And, and there are literally the four North American animals currently in the game. Uh, which goes on to my next bit of feedback. A lot of people have said, will you come back to this park uh, if we get a DLC with other, other suitable animals? Of course, yes, that's kind of the idea with these parks to be honest is that we can kind of finish them box them off and um and be happy with them but then if you know the dlc drops later on and there's animals that fit them we can come in and we've already got the infrastructure set up there hopefully to find some space for them uh, the big one there for me personally is polar bears you know obviously if we if we ever see polar bears in a dlc i would absolutely love to uh, to put them into nuna uh, Kanata. that was the original plan to be honest with you i just kind of assumed we'd get polar bears in the base game so the uh, the actual conservation part of the uh, of the zoo was going to be uh, a polar bear conservation project um but yeah so we would we'll change it up a little bit but yeah in the future if we get things like um canadian cougars uh you know lots of other uh, animals that will totally fit this theme you know even smaller animals things like raccoons um or or, or if we get something like a like moose would be fantastic and, and totally fit so yeah any other animals uh, that we get we will definitely come back and then we'll be able to sort of add them in and not have to just do single exhibit enclosures we can place them in and they fit within a, a themed area so that's pretty much the front of the building done. The uh, the patio that you saw on the front there is completely uh, for show. Uh, but guests should be able to use this area here. Xander's copying me. He's holding something up to his mouth like a microphone. What are you doing, kiddo? Are you making a YouTube video? Oh, beautiful. Um, yeah, the front of the building there is relatively just for show. But they, the guests should come out onto this patio and sit and eat. There is, there's uh, food buildings inside there. There's a chief beef and a... Uh, what's the other one? Um, cosmic Cow Drinks or something like that. There's, there's not too many in the game at the moment, which is fine. I don't really mind. I, I'm happily spam chief beefs everywhere. I'm not too fussed. Uh, although there are some really great brands in the Planet Coaster game that may uh, may well make it to Planet. I imagine they're easy to kind of uh, throw in with the DLC. You know, like if there's... Um 
if we get maybe like a like a Central or South American one, there's there's burritos and stuff that are in Planet Coaster that will kind of fit the fit the theme. Um, so it's an easy way of sort of uh, bumping up some some of the content for DLCs. I think so that wouldn't surprise me. Um, but uh, but yeah, at the moment it's things like this: it was chief beef, hot dogs, and pizza. I think that might be it. Maybe there's a few more actually. I haven't really looked to be honest. Um, so you're doing lovely singing there, kiddo. Huh? You gonna stop talking now? I'm talking to you. What are you watching? What's on telly? What's that? I'm not talking now. He'd rather just talk over me. Um, here, then, yeah. Last little bit of detail of this building was uh, was a little dormer window there. Oh man, what I would give for some more windows. It's actually quite limited. One of the few one of the few bits of the scenery I've really struggled with at the moment is windows and, and doors as well. I guess. Um, yeah, there's only like a couple that I, I really like and. Um, I've gone for these round windows here. It doesn't look right. I end up doing a custom window there, um, and that saves something. If, if, if I'm having to do custom windows, then you know I, I need more windows because uh, these are the best ones I found. These, are, I think, these are just like they're just called the Planet Zoo theme or something. But just because they're plain and recolorable, you can just do a hell of a lot more with them than say so, like the African ones that they're really, really themed. I mean, they're not even windows to be honest. The African ones, they're just like uh, sort of rough wood shutters so uh, they're really sort of specific use there i mean they're great they look great and if you're doing an african theme you're gonna have really good fun i suppose it's kind of my fault for building a theme that isn't in the game right we don't have a north american well we don't we well they have an american theme it's actually quite sort of modern architecture based uh, we don't have this kind of uh, uh frontier style uh, build which which is surprising considering the company that makes the game is called frontier um, flowers, plants. So I've um, I've been talking to Mike, as you probably guessed from what I've been mentioning before. Mike Sheets, awesome content creator, has done some amazing work uh, in this game and Planet Coaster. Has also done some amazing stuff for me before as well. He he's built in Pinewood Hills on a couple occasions, doing some incredible stuff in uh, that's a Planet Coaster series we had. Um, and uh, and yeah, basically he's going to come in and, and help with uh, with that cliff at the back there. But he's um, his go to thing, his his wheelhouse. House, his remit is uh, his foliage. He's, he's, he works professionally with plants. Uh, I don't really know to what extent, so I'm not going to say he's a gardener because I think it's a lot more involved than that. But basically, he works. He works in a professional capacity with planting. Uh, knows exactly what's going on. Knows what all these are when you when you place them down. I don't. I just pick stuff that looks nice. Um, but he's. Uh, I asked him basically. I said, "How do how do flower beds work up here? Basically, in this kind of weather, um, you know, do can I can I can I make flower beds?" And the answer really is no. Basically, just stuff stuff just doesn't grow too well up here so they have um i think i think they're called perennials which are like flowers that flower each year um and need to be kept out of the cold basically so i've placed a couple of those down in containers he said basically if that's what you want to do you want to you want to do some like sort of proper flower planting they need to be in containers they need to be able to be taken out of the weather so um so that's why you've, you'll see a few hanging baskets and, and, and pots and things like that with some more colorful flowers in to bring a little bit of color to the place um but for the most part they're going to be taken out when the weather's bad um to the point where we may well have to build some sort of greenhouse off stage where we can sort of say oh this is where the flowers go uh, other than that it's lots of wild flowers you know the sort of little snowdrops and things like that uh, are what's going to um, sort of create little moments of color in in the smaller spaces and the, all the all the sort of open spaces later on as well uh, but there we go the grand lodge is complete really happy with how it's turned out it leads down nicely there as you can see into the um, to the grizzly habitat i'm going to do a very quick real time because i think people like to see uh, like to see it from a guest point of view and like to see it in a real-time clip. So uh, so let's jump into some real-time. So here we go then as we come in, the uh, the park will sort of head off that way uh, for the next chunk of it, but now we have a Grand Lodge here. As we come in, um, nice sort of big build as you, as you walk through and then it's going to be sort of... Uh, sort of encompassed and framed by this awesome uh, cliff here like i say i i did a bit more work on this but again it, it, it just can be done better by people who know this sort of stuff better uh, so i'm looking forward to to seeing what happens there uh, a few other bits that i didn't do on camera um i just kind of covered this up a bit uh with some 
uh, with some logs, nothing particularly. It j literally just shows that in screenshots you can't see that sort of African style building at the back. It just sort of blends more into the foliage. Somebody has pointed out since that you can actually delete that building piece by piece, but um, if I'd have known that, I'd have built the park a bit further out. But, you know, next time it, it's there, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, as we come through, as you can see, you can walk up into here. Um, the one thing I have done then, like I say, we have the, we have the sort of... Um, the wheelchair accessible elevator here uh, thank you to bro nation they helped point me in the right direction with some details on this um so i really appreciate that i think that's turned out quite nicely and then also in little places we're going to be having we've got some you know ramp in here that helps with uh, with stairs so as we come in we've got a uh, chief beef and um gold pay like i say not be doing interior so then they can come through there uh, and they'll and they should come and sit once we get guests in they should come and sit through there that'd be quite good i think um and obviously, we, you know, we still need to finish off all this, but this is the sort of edge of our project this time. So we're going to have to come down here, and then eventually then, uh, here's the plan is for this here, and maybe, you know, it can go that way and that way if it needs to. This is quite a thin area looking at it now. Um, but they can have as much space as they want, really, in, um, and, you know, maybe even over here. In fact, it probably will go over this way with the with the staff entrance to the habitat being over here uh, but I really want some grizzlies and I want them to be able to access the river um, at the moment it doesn't look much like a river but you can see here there are I've just sort of done this as like a test palette there are things you can do to sort of make it look like river is flowing which I think is uh, is pretty good but yeah we're getting there with that um, I don't want to talk too much about the uh, the references and stuff for that because I'm gonna I'm gonna let Mike because uh, I know Mike likes to uh, you know talk about where he's getting inspiration from and stuff so we've been sharing some images back and forth um but yeah i'm gonna leave that to, to him so uh Nuno is getting packed up off to mike uh sheets uh you can check out his channel already he's done some awesome stuff you're are you all right there love no you're not doing too well are you um he's done some awesome stuff in uh, delay designers park uh Mailing zoo uh, really fantastic um just just in general like he's, he's worked on a on a, a macaque exhibit i think but just the path in and, and foliage and stuff oh a lollipop do you want a lollipop yeah. okay hold on it's a tootsie roll lollipop what'd you say you're welcome um, hopefully it'll keep you quiet. I should have given you one of them 20 minutes ago, shouldn't I? Uh, right, there we go then. Thank you. Oh, we're in the water. Um, I'm really happy that it's turned out. It's a great build. Um, I like the, the the scale of it. It's a little big. Uh, and again, I'm trying to get away from that sort of theme park scale. Uh, and just knowing that, you know, buildings here may be bigger. And they're as big as they need to be as opposed to as big as they need to look. But yeah, look, I think, I think once this is all done in the background, that'll just be a really great vista. Uh, which then opens out into our first exhibit, which is the first thing we'll do when we get back. We'll get some, uh, we'll get a grizzly bear in uh, in the zoo. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Till the next one, be good. Bye.